Hi everyone, this is Venkatesh from ThinkETL. In this video, let us understand what is a SQL transformation Informatica cloud. Let's begin by understanding its definition. SQL transformation Informatica cloud is used to call a stored procedure or function or execute SQL queries in midstream of a mapping pipeline. The SQL transformation can be used both as a connected and unconnected transformation. So using a SQL transformation, we can execute stored procedures, functions, SQL queries, either in the form of a saved query or something which we manually entered into the SQL editor can be executed midstream in a mapping pipeline. So in this video, particularly we'll focus on how to execute stored procedures using SQL transformation in Informatica Cloud. We'll see a demonstration using both connected and unconnected SQL transformations. So let's start by understanding what is a connected SQL transformation. A connected SQL transformation is an inline transformation which comes in the flow of a mapping. It passes incoming fields from an upstream transformation as input parameters to the stored procedure or function and returns the output parameters as data to the downstream transformation. So as the definition says, the SQL transformation takes the input values from the upstream transformation like source transformation, passes the values to the stored procedure, executes the stored procedure and takes the return values from the stored procedure and passes them to the downstream transformations. So let us understand this with a real time scenario. So let's go through a problem statement. There are two tables, departments and employees. So the salary details of the employees are present in the employees table. So both of these tables can be joined using the field called department ID. This department ID field is the primary key in the departments table and is a foreign key in the employees table. So the requirement is to calculate the min, max and average salaries of employees in each of these departments. So there is a stored procedure available in the database which accepts the department ID as input and gives us the max, min and average salaries as the output. So we'll understand how we can call this stored procedure from Informatica cloud mapping, pass department ID as input and get the max, min and average salaries as output in the Informatica cloud mapping. So let's directly jump into our Informatica cloud page. So I'm in my Informatica cloud data integration homepage. Let's start by creating a mapping. Click on new mappings. Click create. In the source transmission, let's select our departments table as source. Okay. We have department ID, department name, manager ID and location ID as the source fields. So we'll be using department ID primarily in this demonstration. Now let's drag and drop the SQL transmission into the mapping canvas. So let's jump into the SQL tab. Let's select the Oracle connection where our stored procedure exists. Select the SQL type as stored procedure. There are other options as stored function SQL query. The calling a stored function is similar to stored procedure except that a stored procedure can return multiple output values whereas a stored function can return only one output value. We'll see the implementation of SQL query as a SQL type in another video. So in this video, we'll focus on understanding how we can call a stored procedure from a SQL transformation. So let's keep the SQL type as stored procedure only. Let's select the stored procedure. Click on select. So I have selected the stored procedure SP get salary by department. So we wanted this transformation to be a connected transformation. So we are not checking this connected stored procedure option. Let's get into the input fields. Here we can see the uh, input parameters of the SQL transmission, which is the department ID. Let's go to the field mapping. So here are our input fields. So we want to pass our department ID as input to the stored procedure input parameter. So here are the output fields of the SQL transmission. Max salary, min salary and average salary. These are the output parameters passed by the stored procedure. Okay. In the target, let's create a flat file connection. So I have configured a dynamic CSV file as my output. So the mapping is valid. Let's save it. Let's also run it. So the mapping completed successfully. Let's inspect the output. So here is our output file. As you can see, there is only max, min and average salary information, but there is no department information here. So let's go to the mapping and see what happened there. So 
So as you can see, the SQL transmission is only passing its output values which are coming from the stored procedure that is average salary, max salary and mean salary but our source fields are not getting populated through the SQL transmission. So let's do one thing. Let's populate the source fields directly to the target transmission. So now let's save it and run it again. So the job completed successfully. Let's inspect the output again. So the values are populated as expected now. So this is the demonstration of a connected SQL transmission. Now let's go through the demonstration of an unconnected SQL transmission. Let's go back to our blog page. An unconnected SQL transmission is not connected to any transmission in a mapping. The unconnected SQL transmission can be called using a colon SP expression from multiple places in a mapping from an expression transmission. The expression can be configured to pass the stored procedure return values to output fields and variables. In a way, the unconnected SQL transmission is similar to the unconnected lookup transmission. It is not connected to the any of the transmission in the mapping and you can call this transmission from an expression transmission using it colon SP expression. Okay. So let us also understand its demonstration through a problem statement. So the problem statement is more or less similar here, except that we are trying to extract only the average salary of employees in this use case. Okay. The procedure is more or less same, except that we are only calculating the average salary this time. So let's understand it through the demonstration. Let me go and create a new mapping again. Select the source quickly. Now let's drag and drop the SQL transmission onto the mapping canvas. Let's go to the SQL tab. Select the connection. Leave the stored procedure as the SQL type. Let's select the stored procedure this time again. Now it's important that we check this box which says it's an unconnected stored procedure. Okay. So the input fields shows the what is the input parameter of the stored procedure which is the department ID and output field shows the average salary which is the output parameter of the stored procedure. Okay. Now let's add expression transmission to the mapping. Let's create an output field called average salary. Now if you go here in the built-in functions, if you scroll down, you will see a stored procedure and what is the stored procedure which we created is available here. Okay, so it says the department ID is the input parameter and average salary is the output parameter. Let's select the department ID here. Let's validate. As you can see, it throws an error. It says incompatible argument. Only variable fields or proc result can be passed as an argument to the out and in out parameters of the stored procedure. So basically the average salary is the output parameter but I cannot directly use the average salary here. Instead I have to pass the variable which Informatica suggests which says proc result. So let me add it here and validate. So the expression is valid now. Basically when this unconnected SQL transformation is called it calls the stored processor which is present inside it, passes the department ID from the source as input to it and takes the output which is the average salary in this case and assigns the values to the proc result. So what this proc result will do, it will assign the value to the average salary here. Okay. I hope that is clear. Now let's go to the target and configure it quickly. Let's validate it. Let's save and run it now. The mapping completed successfully. Let's inspect the output. So the average salary value is populated as expected. Now let's go through the demonstration of another unconnected transmission scenario wherein the stored procedure returns as the multiple values. Okay. Let's start by building the mapping to understand this. Or instead let me do one thing. Let me take the copy of it. So in the unconnected SQL transmission, let me select the stored procedure with multiple output parameters. Let's see what happens. 
okay my input fields is still the department id but my output fields are max salary mean salary and average salary so we can still take the output values of max salary mean salary average salary using unconnected sql transformation and let's see how we can do that in the expression transformation let's reselect the value again so this time it needs multiple values so the department id is something which we know which we can pass as department id here and for let's say i want the average salary i will pass the values proc result what about the values of other two parameters let's understand first by validating the expression so it says only variable fields or proc result can be passed as an arguments to out and in out parameters so for one of the output parameter we passed proc result as value so we need to create two new variable fields to pass values for the max salary and min salary so let's do it Now let's add the variables to the output parameters. Let's validate it now. So the expression is valid. So what happens is when we call this unconnected SQL transformation, it passes the department ID as a value to the input parameter of the stored procedure. The return values of the stored procedure are captured by the variable fields and the proc result. since the proc result is in the expression of the average salary so the average salary gets the value from the proc result but what about the max salary and min salary so to get the max salary and min salary we have to create separate output fields so let's do it So let's preview the data. So as you can see in the output of the preview, so the average salary and max salary and min salary values are captured. So the average salary we use the proc result to capture the output for the max salary and min salary. We have created the variable fields, use them to capture the values and then we created output fields, then captured the values using the variable fields. So I hope this is clear. Or when we have a stored procedure with multiple output parameters we can still use an unconnected sql transformation to extract the values the unconnected sql transformation has some additional capabilities which a connected sql transformation do not have uh, let us understand what they are an unconnected sql transformation can run a stored procedure before or after mapping and also the unconnected sql transformation can run a stored procedure once during a mapping let's see what that is so if you go into the sql transformation and if you go into the advanced tab of an unconnected sql transformation here we can see a stored procedure type so in our case in the earlier case which we have run the value is normal but there are other values which are target preload target postload source preload and source postload so we can basically run the stored procedure only once in the mapping using these methods and also you can define the moment when this stored procedure has to run either it can run before the source data is read or after the source data is read similarly it can be run after a target is loaded or before the target is loaded with the data similarly there are other two points which says the unconnected sql transformation can run a stored procedure based on a condition using if statements so since we are calling the unconnected sql transformation using an expression transformation so you can define a condition using an if statement and if the condition is satisfied you can run the unconnected sql transformation or choose not to run it so this provides the capability to run at multiple places and also run based on a condition and the last point says which i have already discussed that it can be run multiple times within a mapping so this concludes the discussion on sql transformation and the demonstrations using connected and unconnected sql transformations and also the unconnected sql transformation with multiple output parameters all the data is available in the blog with all the screenshots so you can quickly go through the blog post to understand it better i hope this is informative so if you feel this is informative please like the video share and subscribe that's it in this video i'll see you in the next one cheers